Well, hey, Gunamaniacs, welcome to another episode of Gunham Explained. And this episode is going to be a little bit of a science lesson, but I'm not really too good of a teacher. But it's going to be about quantum mechanics, quantum physics, the science in Gundam and how it relates specifically with the Minofsky particle. It's how mobile suits exist in the first place. Now, this is strictly for Universal Century, but there's some carryover depending on the science used in the other AUs. So yeah, that's right, the Minofsky particles. So you might hear sometimes, you know, hey, disperse the Minofsky particles. These are particles in the Gundam universe and Universal Century. They get dispersed out there and they interact with the electromagnetic spectrum, electromagnetic field, in fact, to make it hard to like communicate because it like blocks communication, uh, long range detection. That's why it makes sense to have some sort of like humanoid shaped giant robot floating around doing things in space, like for hand to hand combat. Okay, so Minofsky particles in the Gundam franchise, particularly in the Universal Century timeline, are a fictional construct designed to give a pseudo-scientific foundation to the series' technology and narrative. While they don't directly correspond to real-world quantum mechanics or conceptualization borrows ideas and terminology that echo quantum theory, blended with creative liberties to serve the story, let's break it down step-by-step step to explore how they relate or don't relate to quantum mechanics. Okay, what are Minofsky particles? In the Gundam universe, Minofsky particles are subatomic particles discovered by the fictional scientist Trenov Y. Minofsky. They're produced as a byproduct of helium-3 and deuterium fusion reaction in the Minofsky Lonesco reactor, a compact fusion power source that drives mobile suits and other advanced tech. These particles have unique properties. They carry either a positive or negative charge, interact with electromagnetic fields, and when dispersed, form a lattice-like structure called an eye field. This eye field disrupts radio waves, radar, and guided weaponry while enabling technologies like beam weapons and force fields. Okay. So, get an understanding of what the Minofsky particle does. Let's get an understanding of quantum mechanics basics before we dive into how the Gundam uh, science can relate. Quantum mechanics is the branch of physics that describes how matter and energy behave at very small scales like atoms and subatomic particles. Key concepts include wave-particle duality. Particles... Electrons, photons exhibit particle-like and wave-like uh, properties. And, and that means, you know, like a particle, when we talk about a particle, that's like a physical little dot. We know where it is, how it is, when it is, why it is. But a wave is, is not that, actually. A wave is a distribution probability. It is the probability that something can exist somewhere. And that's kind of like how it's discussed, although I'm going to dive into my interpretation. That's more of a way to help explain it. Uncertainty principle, you can't precisely know both a particle's position and momentum at the same time. So that's what I'm talking about there is where because it technically doesn't exist as a conscious point in time, its existence is more uh, based on what is around. So if you were like an electron, so electrons, not really a little particle. If you were to go to try to find the electron um, in its field of distribution, uh, sure, you might, you know, find out oh, this has this many electrons, but really they exist in almost like a cloud at any time, any place. And, and we'll get into it a little bit, but kind of think where we have a lot of attributes of things like the color, the height, the weight. But have you ever thought about attributes like it's time, it's space, like it's location? Think if you had an object, but it didn't have the attributes of time and space, then how would it exist? Well, it would exist everywhere all the time and nowhere, never. I know that's getting kind of weird, but just think of how with these concepts, science engineers can derive potentially energy from an untapped source. And I'll get into that. Superposition and entanglement particles can exist in multiple states simultaneously or be linked across distances in ways that defy classical physics. And it's funny when it says can be linked across distances. The, the, the misnomer here is across dis distances. Once, <laughs> it's hard to talk. Once we start thinking of attributes in that way, that's like a human construct. Just like time is something we're perceiving, distance is also something that's perceived based on the rest of the makeup of our body. Because in fact, what's going on is everything exists everywhere all at once. And I think that's a movie. Um, at the same time. It's just as a conscious being, I am seeing the attributes of time and space along with everything else my senses can pick up. So really, if particles were interacting at a quantum level, that means it, if time and distance doesn't matter, then you can affect something like when it comes to, uh, I guess, energy, quantum computing. The idea is, let's say you go to fill up your gas tank in your car. 
And then you're like, you know what, it's full, but I'm gonna fill it up again. Well, you can't because it's full, but if you were using quantum mechanics, you could fill that gas tank up with twice the energy in a single space. Probability and wave functions. Particle behavior is governed by probabilities rather than certainties. And I feel like probability is also another thing when you hear that, you think, oh, it's by chance where it could be. It's like, no, 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 actually, it might seem like by chance where it could be, but it's more of, it is somewhere in this area at all times. It's just that when we're then consciously observing it, then we're getting, okay, here's the place, here's where it's at. But if you're working at that quantum level without the conscious observer, observer aspect, you can get free energy from there potentially. Okay, now to get into Minofsky particles and quantum mechanics. Let's see if they make sense in Universal Century. Subatomic nature and charge. Minofsky particles are described as having near zero rest mass and carrying positive or negative charges reminiscent of real subatomic particles like electrons or positrons. And quantum mechanics particles are defined by properties like mass, charge, and spin. And the behavior emerges from these traits. The idea of Minofsky particles spontaneously aligning into a cubic lattice, the eye field, when scattered, could be loosely likened to quantum effects where particles self-organize based on their interactions, though no real particle forms a macroscopic lattice like this naturally. Yes, and, and it doesn't because what it would be the framework for that? Well, there's been some tests done with crystals in the vacuum of space, and the idea is with a vacuum, you can then have, you know, particles form maybe whatever way you want using some sort of maybe uh, magnetism to align it. Uh, because uh, with, with a vacuum, the lack of other mass to cause any issues, uh, yeah, you could move and bend light and whatever at will. Interference with electromagnetic waves. Minofsky particles' ability to block radio waves and radar suggests an interaction with the electromagnetic fields, a domain where quantum mechanics plays a role in reality. Um, in quantum electrodynamics, particles can scatter or absorb electromagnetic radiation. The eye field's disruption might evoke the idea of quantum interference where waves cancel each other out, but in Gundam... This exaggerated to a sci-fi extreme disabling entire systems rather than just altering wave patterns. But it still makes sense because the idea at a quantum level, there's not really a time and space where something can exist. So then with that, the idea is, let's say you were to disperse a Minofsky particle in a certain area in space, because it's using its quantum properties and time and space doesn't matter, it can appear where it needs to be, however big it needs to be by the dispersal unit. And so that's how then it works. And it's almost like maybe, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff, even in real world today, a lot of this stuff is still kind of up in the air. Let me give you some examples actually before moving on, that might help. So here's a patent by uh, Harold E. Putoff. Okay, this one is called communication method and apparatus with signals comprising scalar and vector potentials without electromagnetic fields. So, okay, without electromagnetic field, that means something isn't bound to a certain speed that it can travel because then the mass is going to propagate uh, in that uh, field. Signals comprising scalar and vector potentials. Now we're talking about time and space. So finding the actual attributes of time and space. So the idea here with this patent is to be able to communicate instantaneously over any distance because time and space doesn't matter. The electromagnetic field isn't uh, messing around with that, you know, creating some sort of like drag. Um, and this patent exists here. Um, Harold E. Putoff, he's a huge deal in the uh, physics realm and works for the United States government. And here's another one. Um, this is electronic devices using discrete contained charged particle bundles and source of same. And there's some other others as well. This is Salvatore Cesar Pais. Um, this is U.S. Department of Navy craft using an inertial mass reduction device. So the idea here is uh, you're creating resonance within the cavities um, that you're almost using waves to cancel each other out that then create a vacuum. It creates a bubble that's like a vacuum in space. And because there's a vacuum there, then during that's, I guess what it's saying, inertial mass reduction. You're creating a reduction in the the inertia of the mass of the object moving because the medium is now a vacuum. Um, so I think it's the SR-71 Blackbird jet or some other. Anyway, there's some Navy equipment where they use plasmas to create vacuums uh, along shielding in order to reduce drag, which again is very amazing if you think about it, because that's 
where's that energy? That's like, and it's like creating energy, right? You're creating a way to reduce drag. And that's almost like what UFOs are. And wait a minute, isn't this talking about UFOs? I guess it is high frequency gravitational wave generators. So I guess really the United uh, States Department of Navy um, has another patent that's based around UFOs. I mean, really, it's actually talking about how to manipulate um, grav- gravitational waves by using, you know, quantum mechanics, using those mechanics uh, in order to derive certain aspects at that small nature. A lot of it's like gravity, for instance, um, uh, when you can go beyond the electromagnetic spectrum so the speed of light is not an issue. That's where that instant communication occurs. Okay, energy and technology applications. Minofsky particles power beam weapons by forming megaparticles. When positive and negative particles collide, releasing energy in a directed uh, plasma-like stream, this has a faint parallel to quantum mechanics particle-antiparticle annihilation, where matter converts to energy per E equals MC square. However, in reality, such annihilations produce gamma rays, not plasma beams, and Minofsky particles don't follow antimatter rules. They're just opposite charges of the same particle type. So that's interesting there, although I would say it's probably done a little differently um, with, let's say, with a um, beam, we- any type of beam weaponry. I'm assuming what it's doing is it's using maybe gases that are then uh, shot through a vacuum so that all the electrons, um, like when a gas is in a vacuum, the electrons are going to go somewhere and they're going to try to um, uh, even out uh, this term for that. And I, they strip themselves away uh, from the particles and that creates a plasma. So... You know, again, I think this stuff is very esoteric. There are some patents we see, and I'm just interested in this stuff, so I research it. But in terms of like, I guess, when it comes to maybe academia or, you know, articles online, they're not privy to that level of detail just because a lot of this stuff is still being done behind closed doors. There's patents out there, but they're owned by like the government, for instance, and they're probably having private corporations work on them. So that's why we don't really hear about them. But I will say that the when when they talk about any sort of plasma weaponry in Gundam, they're basically using a device that is able to strip the electrons from gases, um, which creates that sort of phenomenon in real life. This actually happens um, when in, in labs when they're trying to produce plasmas. Speculative leap from known physics. The back uh, the backstory of Minofsky particles involves their discovery through an unexplained electromagnetic wave effect in the fusion reactor, which the Minofsky Physics Society later identified as a new particle. This mirrors how quantum mechanics emerged historically unexpected phenomenon like black body radiation and the photoelectric effect led to the discovery of quanta. Yet while quantum mechanics built on rigorous math and experimentation, Minofsky physics is a narrative device, not a testable theory. Which is true, but there's a lot of interesting stuff that it's it's calling out. Even here saying this mirrors how quantum mechanics emerged historically unexpected phenomena like black body radiation in the photoelectric effect. So back in the day, if you were to talk about anything like quantum mechanics, they think you're crazy. And it's like, well, how do we explain black body radiation and the photoelectric effect? And it, it's explained to a degree, but then when it gets messy, because I, I challenge you, go research how storms are formed and create lightning, how magnets work. Um, I get the plasmas I was talking about that's used on the front of certain aircraft and static electricity. If you dive in super deep into how these things emerge into our reality, they are interacting at a quantum level for it to occur. So again, sparks, electricity, plasma, these are high energy and they're coming from a a quantum event, a quantum quantum phenomenon. So it's very easy to think, well, wait a minute, if we can make those things happen at a small scale into a large scale, obviously human beings should be able to harness this stuff. And I believe you already have. I believe that's a lot of the UFO stuff. And I'm sure it it would be impossible for me as just a normal person hanging out in life that makes YouTube videos and um, plays with action figures that I would know all of physics, right? There's more out there we don't know yet that the regular public doesn't know. Where they diverge, Minofsky particles stretch far beyond quantum mechanics into the realm of fiction. Well, let's see. Let me see if... uh, I can uh, add to that. Microscopic effects, quantum mechanics typically governs the subatomic scale with effects fading at larger scales unless carefully engineered. Quantum computing. Oh, so it's saying it only happens at subatomic scale, but it can happen at larger scales. So it's saying that. It's interesting how this sentence is almost worded, like it's conspiratorial or it's trying to hide the secrets from me. But really, it's. I hate it sometimes when science states things like that. It's like, this can't happen 
Although it has happened this time, when it's like, you got to remember that. You got to remember that. Monofsky particles, however, have dramatic battlefield-wide impacts like jamming communications over kilometers, blah, blah, blah. And that's where I already said, when you're working at the quantum level, the scalar potential is coming to play where the time and distance actually doesn't even matter anymore. It's not even a metric that only exists based on our, our perception. And it's more of an attribute for things that are like beyond, I guess, the electromagnetic spectrum. That it, distance is a required attribute. I feel lattice, the idea of charged particles forming a stable repulsive lattice in open space lacks a quantum analog. In reality, charged particles repel or attract based on Columbo's law. Columbo's law notes Coulomb's law. But they don't self-assemble into a persistent 3D structure without extreme conditions. That is true, actually. And I think I was talking about that before. Like, if you're in a vacuum, you can have particles form a specific structure. In fact, I yeah, I was just saying they did a examination with the, or a test uh, in a vacuum with crystals and they were actually forming a lattice structure as if the backbone of a vacuum is a lattice structure isn't that kind of odd narrative convenience Minovsky particles exist to justify gun and drill robot blah 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 yeah and that's true um which is kind of the point of this is like how far and how true are the physics in gundam to real life and i think they do a really good job of actually hey cat being real physics and I appreciate that a lot, considering uh, over time getting into uh, the new type phenomenon consciousness, um, really seeing where there's a lot of, you know, Western or Eastern philosophy and a lot of meditation, stuff like that, that is incorporated into the new type phenomenon. It actually makes sense even at the quantum level we were top, talking about here, because, you know, new types able to communicate beyond uh, the Minofsky uh, interference, which means they are working at that subatomic level. So anyway, I thought this was very interesting. And if anyone has any questions or any input or any corrections or anything, feel free to post them in the comments below. Because again, when I research things like quantum mechanics and physics, it's it's more of a fun thing I like to do because it's fun. It's a hobby. And I guess like my Gundam hobby, I take it seriously. I have fun with it, though, but I'm really serious about the facts and information. And, you know, I do a lot of research on a lot of, you know, science in general. And so to see where we are are in terms of uh, particle physics, quantum mechanics, see where, how far we've actually come, and then seeing what is used in Gundam, that, that just excites me more as an enjoyer of sci-fi and how Gundam really does a good job with its sci-fi, especially considering when it came out in 79. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. Shout out to Art Row for Gundam, sponsor of this channel. And thanks to all the supporters that make this possible. If that's something you're interested in, check the links in the description below. Or come join us at our Discord. We can talk Monofsky physics there, if you like. Anyway, y'all, this was a lot of fun. Um, I'll probably do some more of these later. But until next time, be cool.